everyone Christian here and I want to do a little bit of a video uh, not only on this palm right here which is Gaussia Maya but on how palms from different genera are related so we have this 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 uh, palm Gaussia Maya is from the area the, the Mayan area of Central America so mostly southern Mexico Guatemala that area it's mostly a it's a tropical species it doesn't it can handle some frost but it uh, it mostly kind of has this uh, thinner trunk with a kind of dainty crown and wispy leaflets, which do have a tropical look about them. But they there's nothing really stunning about the palm. Uh, it is, you know, I mean, it is nice. It does grow relatively fast, and it's a relatively easy grower. It doesn't seem to be that uh, nutrient deficient. It doesn't have that many issues with growing here in Florida. Um, it doesn't really like, I would say it's an upper zone 9 palm. It, it probably does best without any frost, but it will handle frost, just not back to back to back so but if you look at this you can see the seed here is you know it's a larger seeded uh that you know plant it has the same size seed as like the gomez pompe you guys saw in one of the other videos but the one thing about this palm is that it actually looks like a large version of the uh bamboo palm if you look at it you can see the leaflets here and you see kind of like if you think imagine this trunk being like very thin and this flower bracts if you look at them look at a uh camaderia they, they look uh, almost identical and this is basically an evolution from uh, I don't know if it was from this speed this gen genus to Camaderia or from Camaderia to Gaussia but they're very co closely related they have the same flowering uh, systems they have the same trunk look just one decided to enjoy sun more like the Gaussia and the other decided to be larger and the Camaderia decided to be more of the shady uh, under undergrowth plant so it's kind of neat how that happened um, as far as cultivation, these seeds, basically, just like any of the Gaussias, like the one that uh, I showed before, you just want to throw them in some, uh, they do like some rich soil. Throw them in there, uh, give them plenty of heat, uh, at least 80, 85 degrees if you can, and Fahrenheit that is, so, you know, about 30 Celsius if you can can do that. And, uh, you know, they sh fresh seeds should germinate pretty fast in a few weeks. They're, they're pretty easy to grow. They're, they're very rewarding. Uh, they don't re require a lot of... Help. You can see these are sitting here and they don't really have any nutrient deficiencies whatsoever. So you can kind of see here this leaflet that's def it's uh, brown devoid of any, uh, I'm sorry, this rake is devoid of any leaflets. And uh, uh, Camaderia will do that as well. It'll kind of like strip its leaflets off on a, on a uh, dead leaf or an old leaf. So they kind of share a lot of those characteristics. So I thought that was interesting um, and wanted to share that how some of these species some of these palms, even though they're from different uh, genera, can share the same uh, characteristics on the plant. So when you're looking at palms, even they may not be in the same genus, they may be closely related. And so then they also grow nearby each other. Gaussia is from mostly Central America, and Camaderia grows throughout Central and South America. So um, there's actually three of them here, and I believe this is the fourth one here. Uh, it has the same kind of leaf structure. I don't know, sometimes the Gaussians can be kind of hard to tell when they're a little bit younger because this has the fatter of the trunk, the more Cuban it tends to be. Uh, but I believe that's a Maya as well. But you can see the smaller one here, it kind of has a you know, nice leaflet structure. You have a, it's kind of biplanar. You have the leaflets going kind of up towards the camera and then up in a, in a V. And then you also have these, this set of leaflets kind of drooping down and it's happening. that's happening on the other side as well. So... Um, and you can see it does have a crown shaft. It's not a very prominent one. It kind of has this white glaucous color, which is prominent when younger. When it gets a little bit older, it uh, you know kind of gets kind of leggy and older. And it, it, it this used to be a popular cultivation plant in Miami, uh, maybe 50 years ago. But like some other species, uh, they've kind of gone by the wayside because of their there's, there's just been prettier palms that people have decided to go ahead and grow. But this is still worth a grow. It's definitely uh, hardy to the wind, and like I said, it can take a, it can take it some cold, and uh, you know can grow in full sun or in shade. It's not really that particular. So, uh, like I said, the seeds are you know are not too large, and you know the the seedlings don't require a lot. I mean, you can when I pull these out of I used to grow these, I put them in perlite, and when the roots would kind of get large enough that I had to kind of get them out, I actually just yank these out, and they would never die. So it was kind of an easier way of growing them than, uh, you know, a lot of, if you try and yank a lot of palms, they're not going to do so well um, once they come out of the soil. 
uh, they're going to have you know have some kind of root damage. But these are pretty flexible roots, and they they handle it pretty well. So anyway, that's about it for the uh, for the Gaussia Maya. Um, if you have any more questions about Gaussias, um, you know, go ahead and leave it down below. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and let me know what else you guys would like to see, either species-wise or beyond palms. I'm going to start doing a few more segments of just subtropical slash tropical species. And uh, hopefully that will kind of enter a new chapter for this uh, YouTube channel. So until then, thanks for watching, everyone.